Please note it down and uh, you can start solving these questions. There is a question waiting for you there. Are you able to see the question? You may not be able to solve that question, it's okay. If you are able to solve, it's very good. Yes, 57.146. Yes, very good, very good, very good. Superb. Let's see, let's see. So, what is the question given here? I'll read the question for you once. I'll uh, read the question for you. Uh, the live loads acting over a structure, the live loads acting over a structure at different conditions are shown as below. 30 kilometer per meter, 15 kilometer per meter, 20 kilometer per meter, 45 kilometer per meter, 50 kilometer per meter, etc. The characteristic load to be considered here is. So it is given that the various loads acting on the structure, it is given that 30 kN per meter is there and we have 50 kN per meter and we have 20 kN per meter and we have around 45 kN per meter is also acting in that uh, structure and finally we have 50 kN per meter acting on that structure. So uh, these are the load values given and we are asked to find the characteristic load acting in the structure. What is the characteristic load to be considered in the design? So how to find the characteristic load? We have already discussed it. Characteristic load Fck will be is equal to Fkm minus 1.65 sigma. Is it correct? Fm minus 1.65 sigma. Correct na? This equation is oh, wrong. Fm plus 1.65 sigma. Fck is equal to Fm plus 1.65 sigma. That characteristic load is equal to the mean load plus 1.65 sigma. So what is Fm? Fm is the mean load. What is sigma? Sigma is the standard deviation. Now let's, let's find one by one. Let's start with the Fm. What is Fm? Fm is actually our mean loads or mean of loads. How to find the mean of loads? Take the sum of all the 5 and divide it by number of samples. Here total of number of samples or the total number of loads here taken is 5, right? So Fm value will be equal to 30 plus 15 plus 20 plus 45 plus 50. Total divided by 5. What is the answer? Mean load? I think it is 80, right? Uh, tell me other value. What is the low? What is the mean value there? Yeah, it is 32, right? Yeah, okay. Fine, it is 32. It is coming as 32 kN per meter. Fm value, that is the mean load is taken, is obtained as 32 kN per meter. So now we have to calculate the, now we have to calculate the standard deviation. That is sigma. Standard deviation, that is sigma. How to find the standard deviation? Anyone, how to find the standard deviation? See, to find the standard deviation, the equation here is under root sigma fm minus fi the whole square divided by n. fm minus fi the whole square divided by n. What is fm? fm is the mean of the loads. What is fi? fi is, stands for f1 f2, f3, f4, fy, etc. where n is the number of samples. See, this equation actually uh, not valid everywhere. Our IS code says that use a minimum 30 number of samples for all those things. But if we use a number of samples less than 30, or if, if I say if the number of samples are less than 30, we have to modify this equation like this. The equation will become Sigma Fm minus Fy the whole square divided by n minus 1 under root. And if the number, if the number of samples, if the number of samples are greater than 30 or greater than or equal to 30, the equation will be different. That will become Fm minus Fi the whole square divided by n. n where n is the number of samples, Fm will be the mean load and f i will be the load values f1 f2 f3 f4 f y etc here how many number of samples are there here how many number of samples are there 
Tell me how many number of numbers are there? Five. What happened and in the did I make any mistake? Did I make any mistake? It is n minus one. When the number of numbers are less than thirty, it must be n minus one. And when the number of numbers are greater than or equal to thirty, it must be n. Okay, no. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. So uh, here the number of numbers are less than thirty. Which equation will I consider? I am going to consider this equation for finding the standard deviation. So forget about this, but you have to remember this equation also. You have to keep this equation also in your mind. Okay, keep that equation in your mind. So you want to find sigma value under root under root f y value is thirty two. Thirty two minus first load value is thirty. Thirty two minus thirty the whole square plus thirty two minus fifteen the whole square. Plus thirty two minus twenty the whole square, plus thirty two minus forty five the whole square, plus thirty two minus fifty the whole square, the whole divided by n number of samples are five minus one. So what is the standard deviation? Tell me the value of standard deviation, please. After calculating this, tell me the value of standard deviation. I need the standard deviation value. Sigma. What is the value of standard deviation? It will come around fifteen point two four. Very good. It is coming around 15.24. The standard deviation here I am obtaining it as 15.24. I have obtained our mean load as our 32 kilogram per meter. I obtained the sigma value as 15.24. Now we can easily find the characteristic load, right? What is the characteristic load? F C K, which is equal to F M. What was F M? F M was 32 plus 1.65. What is sigma value? Fifteen point two four. So using uh, by calculating, you will be getting the answer around fifty seven point fifty seven point one six kilo newton per meter will be the characteristic load acting on this structure or characteristic load to be considered in the design, right? So remember this equation. When the number of samples are less than or uh, less than thirty, you have to use this equation for finding the standard deviation. The number of samples are greater than or equal to thirty. You have to use which equation? Sigma uh, f m minus f y the whole square divided by n under root. Okay, that is sigma as uh, f m minus f y the whole square divided by n minus one the whole under root. The answer here we will be getting as fifty seven point one six kilogram per meter. Is it clear? I think it's clear, right? This is the characteristic load. If you if I if he is asking you to find the design load. How to find the design load? Here we are given with the live load, na? What is the fa partial safety factor to, to be considered for live load? What is the partial safety factor to be considered for live load as per limit set of collapse? It is 1.5. Correct, na? For live load, it is 1.5. To calculate the design load, this is our characteristic load. Multiply it with 1.5, you will be getting the design load, right, na? Yes, everyone is saying the correct. Yeah. Okay, just please note it down. Those who didn't get the answer, please note it down. Fifty-seven point one six will be the characteristic strength, characteristic load, and eighty-five point seven four will be the design load. And if it is done, if it is done, you can go with the next question and give me the answers. Yes, good. See, uh, Dhruv, actually, uh, they are giving us some uh, sigma values for different grades of concrete. Uh, we will uh, consider them for the mixed design. Okay, we will consider them for the mixed design. Don't go for this. For taking the design load, we have to calculate it. Okay. So I'll read the question for you. The factor loads at limit set of collapse for dead load plus live load, dead plus uh, dead load plus wind load, and dead load plus live load plus wind load combinations, according to us, uh, IS 456 2000 are respectively. Option A, option B, option C, and option D are given us. It is given there. It's a direct question. Uh, regularly or in. Uh, Uh, occasionally, yeah, they are asking the questions like this. We can find many number of questions from this single table in the previous year papers. Okay, so understanding the values and understanding the load combinations are very important. This actually, that uh, the table I have given uh, uh, just now is actually a very important concept, and uh, you can expect many number of questions from that single concept. Okay, so you have to remember them here. As you know, as your people are saying, uh, all of. Uh, Yes, all of you are giving the correct answers. Answer will be uh, D for dead load, live load combination. The uh, partial safety factor should be considered as 1.5. That is 1.5 dead load plus 1.5 live load. For uh, dead load plus wind load or earthquake load combination, the load combination must be 0.9 or 1.5. Dead 
let load plus 1.5 let load and for all the three load combinations it must be for it must be 1.2 dead load plus 1.2 uh, live load plus 1.2 wind load or earthquake load right so these are the load combinations the correct answer will be d i think no need to discuss that right now then you can uh, start solving this question uh, it's also a very interesting question it is an ies question actually i'll read the question for you an rcc beam is subjected to the following moment dead load moment is given as 20 kilonewton per meter live load moment is given as 30 kilonewton meter seismic load moment that is earthquake load moment is given as 10 kilonewton per meter wind load moment is given as 5 kilonewton per meter the design moment as per limit set of collapse is options are also given uh, 60 kilonewton per meter sorry kilonewton meter option b 75 kilonewton meter option c 72 kilonewton meter and option d 80 kilonewton per meter kilonewton meter right yes try to find it yes everyone is saying that c uh, did you people consider all the three load combinations? I told you, no? you have to consider all the three load combinations and take the maximum of the three. That was the procedure. That's the procedure we have to follow to find the uh, design load. Did you consider all the three load combinations? If you have not uh, taken, just think about that once again. So given that, I will explain this. Given that live load moment is equal to 20 kN meter, dead load moment is equal to 30 kilonewton meter earthquake load moment is given as 10 kilonewton meter wind load moment is given as 5 kilonewton meter so we have to consider we are asked to find the we are asked to find the design moment as per limit set of collapse as I have told you, in order to find the design moment or design load, I have to consider the various load combinations. First load combination will be dead load plus live load combination. And the design load will be, or the, or the partial safety factor for to be considered are 1.5 dead load plus live load, which is equal to 1.5 into 20 plus 30. You will be getting the answer as 75 kilonewton meter right for our dead load plus wind load or earthquake load combination the partial safety factor to be considered are 0.9 or 1.5 as there is nothing mentioned about the reversal of stresses if it is involved in the question we have to consider it as 0.9 if nothing is mentioned so i am going to consider it as 1.5 1.5 dead load plus wind load or earthquake load combination is equal to 1.5 dead load here is 20 in wind load earthquake load which one will I consider for wind load and earthquake load which one will I consider will I consider this 10 or 5 which one will I consider yes I will consider the I will consider 10 right yes you are right why we are considering earthquake load why because it is the maximum one yes so answer will be 45 kilo newton meter then considering the third load combination which is our dead load plus our dead load uh, live load wind load or earthquake load combination the partial safety factor will be 1.2 dead load plus live load wind load or earthquake load so it will be coming it will be come around it will come around 1.2 plus 20 plus 30 plus 10 answer will be 72 kilonewton meter so among all the all the uh, design moments we are getting 75 kilonewton meter if i consider this load combination and i'll be getting 45 kilonewton meter if i consider this load combination and i'm getting 72 kilonewton meter if i consider this load combination as for design i have to consider i have to take the maximum of the three if i consider these three the maximum i'll be getting here for the load combination dead load plus live load the answer here will be 75 kilonewton meter there is around uh, uh, two three questions from this concept find the design moment find the design load as per limit set of collapse as per limit set of serviceability so this is very important you will be giving different values and you will be asked to find the design moment as per limit set of collapse or limit set of 
serviceability. So you have to consider the partial safety factor for loans. Right? So please note it down. So uh, any doubts in these topics? No. Okay, very good. So today actually we didn't discuss much. Uh, we were discussing only the basics. But uh, these things are very important. Okay? There's a lot of combinations. 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. It's 1.2, 1.2, 1.2. Just remember, take the maximum value of wind load and earthquake load and when reversal of stresses is there or when uh, our uh, stability to do uh, stability against uh, overturning is there, you have to consider 0.9 instead of 1.5. You have to remember these two things. And for limit set of serviceability also, the partial safety factor will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. You do not forget this table. You cannot take your code to the examination hall. You have to remember some values which are required for you to solve the questions in your exam. Okay. So uh, you can ask me if you have any doubts. Uh, if I start the next topic, if I start the next concept, which I think uh, 10 minutes are only 10 minutes are there. Na? So I think it will, it will not be sufficient to finish the topic. You can ask me if you have any doubts. Any doubts? If you have any doubts, you can ask me. You can ask me. Dhruv, actually we have discussed it, right? The weightage of this subject, I think uh, Dhruv was absent in the beginning right yeah see the weightage of this subject is will come around 5 to 8 marks see uh, recently uh, we got questions for around uh, 8 marks in okay, 2019 we got uh, 6 marks uh, questions for around 6 marks and in 2019 I got uh, we got questions for around uh, 9 marks so 8 marks okay so you can expect questions for around 5 to 8 marks minimum they will be asking for uh, 5 so notes will be uh, sufficient for all the concepts See, Angit, uh, see, notes alone will not be sufficient, but we are, I will uh, discuss all the relevant things. But notes so alone will not be sufficient. Uh, the things will go like this. See, you have got the concept here. I am sure, I am pretty much sure, or I am 100% sure that you have got the concept of this, this you have got this concept. That is, uh, calculating this uh, uh, design load, calculating this, uh, or uh, characteristic load, etc. Uh, and this partial safety factor for loads. See, after this, after this, we have to start solving some questions on your own. For that purpose, you can depend on previous year gate questions. You can depend on previous year IES questions. And you can uh, start giving the test series after the finishing of, after finishing this chapter. And practice, practice, practice. Uh, you'll make many number of mistakes. See, all, all of you made the mistake. Uh, you, all of you have given the answer 72. Why? Because you people made a mistake there. Right now. You people have given, uh, taken all the low, three load combinations and you have taken, given the value of 72. So we, have, we are having a much more, than, we are having a higher value here. So we have to take the higher value. We have given 72 as the answer, that is wrong. Right now, so you made a mistake there. So understand where you are making the mistakes and uh, learn from your mistakes, just like uh, I used to say like this. Learn from your mistake, that's the thing you have to do. If you do this, success will be yours. Because I followed this. Okay, train load corresponding to limit set of collapse is greater than that of limit set of serviceability. Uh, then why it is mentioned differently? Yes, that's an excellent question actually. See, uh, limit set of collapse and limit set of serviceability. See, uh, this limit set of collapse actually we don't know. As I told you in the, uh, the in case of chair, the, we don't know uh, maybe uh, five person can sit on the chair, then the chair will fail. We actually don't know that. We will never apply the load there. Na? We will never apply that load, that is 6 persons load on that chair. We will, uh, while designing stage or the, while, uh, before constructing it, we will assume that, okay, when uh, 6 persons load is there, structure will fail. So these all are assumptions, these all are imaginary. So limit set of collapse actually is an imaginary condition, right, imaginary condition. But when you talk about this limit of serviceability, uh, the, it deals with the real behavior of the structure. Think about that chair example. You will be sitting on that chair. The check the deflection for this load, for one person's load, which is known as the working load. So that's the reason why these load factor values and this uh, the, the load fa the, the partial safety factor for loads are considered separately or taken separately for limit set of collapse and limit set of serviceability. You have you can write it if you want. Limit set of collapse is actually an imaginary behavior, and uh, this limit set of serviceability will uh, de deals with the actual or real behavior of the structure. That's the reason why we are considering uh, less factor of safety value, so load factor, uh, that uh, partial safety factor for loads for in a limit set of serviceability. As we are dealing with the uh, real behavior, as we are dealing with the working loads. 
Saksham, if you take the 50% of probability for FCK, then FM will become FCK. Yes, you are right. I will have a question for that. I will discuss that. Okay. Uh, he is right. If you want, I can uh, discuss it here itself. Suppose we have, we have, we have discussed the normal distribution curve like this, right? This is a normal distribution curve. And for 95% of probability, this is the 95% of the probability, I'll be having our FCK. I'll be having FCK. So FCK is actually defined for 95% of probability. And we'll be having the FM here at the center. That is the mean load here at the center. Center means this is 50%. This is 50%. And this much portion is 50 percentage and this represents 95 percentage of confidence level. And if in some questions, uh, if it is mentioned that FCK is defined for 50 percentage of probability, what is the meaning of that? Here it is, it was defined for 95 percentage. Now we don't have to consider this 95 percentage. When it is defined for 50 percentage, we don't have to consider this 95 percentage probability, right? We have to consider only this 50 percentage. 50 percentage will come here. So this will become our EFCK, this is our FM, so both will become equal, FM will become equal to EFCK. If FCK is defined for 50 percentage, uh, that 50 percentage, then FM will become EFCK. Right now, we will uh, discuss it in a question, okay. So why, uh, why uh, for N minus 1 we are taking, see it's actually a coral recommendation, our code is suggesting that. If the number C for B uh, code is suggesting uh, or code is uh, recommending the use of a minimum 30 number of samples uh, for calculating this load and all. But when uh, it is also suggesting that see uh, taking all the 30 loads are actually not practically may not be possible all the time right. So we are just modifying the equation for standard deviation. That's what we are doing to do if the number of samples or the number of uh, uh, the number of samples are less than 30. We will modify the equation of standard deviation that's it. Yeah, I think you can find the same equation if you find if you search the IS for 56 2000 you can find the equation there okay all the things all the things which you are going to discuss in the in the coming classes all the things are uh, given in your code book I'll be taking the things from there and I'll be delivering it here but you have to remember that I have to take the some more introduction part huh? why because see you don't think that this is a theory subject don't it's not like that but I, I think I have to mention many things here in uh, uh, tomorrow's lecture, what I'm going to do is I'll be discussing about the characteristics strength of the concrete. We'll be discussing about the design strength of the concrete. Similar to this, I'll be discussing about the partial safety factor for yes, material language summary. Yes, I'm do doing that. Yes, listen here. I'll uh, explain again. In uh, tomorrow's class, I'll be discussing about the characteristic strength of concrete, uh, design strength of the concrete, or partial safety factor for materials that is concrete and steel. In uh, for limit set of uh, collapse and limit set of serviceability, then after that we will discuss about the stress strain curve of the concrete, which is very important, and we will discuss about the Young's modulus of the concrete, which is the most important topic when we discuss this chapter. Then I'll discuss about creep of concrete. I'll discuss about shrinkage of concrete. Uh, not theory, but only the relevant things. Okay.